special guest, Dream Maker Diva, the Twitch mod who has come out of obscurity to hang out with us tonight. How are you? Good evening. I'm awesome. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. So everyone out there, as you know, if you watch DJs on Twitch, there has been the emergence of a role called the moderator. And oftentimes we don't see the moderator, but they do so much to help navigate that experience working with the DJ. And tonight we're going to get to uh, learn a lot more about that. But before we get into all of that, Dream Maker Diva, how are you in this crazy world coming off of COVID? Hopefully we're done with COVID, going to something else, political issues, wars, rumors of wars, you name it. How are you? Well, you know what? Thank you so much for asking. I am well. I am healthy. I have no complaints. Um, and, you know, COVID brought us a lot. Um, but one of the things that it did bring us is the opportunity um, to really be still. And, and in that stillness, it gave us the opportunity to really think about all of the activities we have been engaged in. And for me, I thought about all of the things that I would do, I was doing before the shutdown. And if I was doing things that brought me happiness or if I was doing things because it was a habit. And so from that reevaluation, it just gave me the opportunity to really think about creating meaningful relationships and setting boundaries. So so COVID, that that stillness that COVID brought us, it brought us the reevaluation time, but then it brought us Twitch and and DJs and amazing music too, which I know we'll we'll get into more in a little bit here. Well, the family is checking in. DJ DCR, what's going on? He said, What's I happening? Think- since- <laughs> and DJ Dewey B, man, we miss you so much. I wish you was here. I know you gotta take care of your biz, but much love, peace, and love from the set. And uh, we're gonna do you proud tonight. Dream Maker Diva, tell us a little bit about where you're from. Tell us uh, how you got into this thing called house, where you went to school, yeah, and all that sure. good stuff. Absolutely. So I'm from um, South Side of Chicago, what we call the low end. And uh, I was uh, grew up in Chicago, grew up in Natchez, Mississippi. Now, Natchez, Mississippi is the home of Alexander O'Neill. So I grew up with a couple of his nephews and and that. And um, I really um, got immersed into um, house when I came back to Chicago from Mississippi for high school, I um, did not go to Mendel. I went to- (laughs) Make sure that's, that is true. And that's a good thing. (laughs) I did not go to Mendel. I went to the uh, Dunbar Vocational High School. um, And, you know, I really just heard a lot of house music going to parties and so forth. And it was really the clubhouse. So, you know, it was like the percolator, Shake what your mama gave you, new, new, you used to know how to love me, right? All of that kind of stuff. And then that's when footwork, you know, the emergence of the new school footwork came out and, you know, all of those really fast beats that you could dance to and and shake to. So that was my introduction. That was really for years, my knowledge until COVID. When when more DJs got on Twitch and started showing the expansiveness of um, of house music and deep house and soulful house. And that's that it has really just really expanded my palette for music, especially house music. So I'm just so very grateful for that. And that's and everyone. Thanks so much for your comments. Keep them coming. Dream Maker Diva is, is just getting warmed up and she's got so much to share. She seems very knowledgeable about the origins and how it's expanded. Why do you think it is so popular and pervasive all around the world, different genres, genres and ever expanded? Yep. You know, I believe that's a really great question because I, everything that we enjoy today has a history. And so house music from my perspective, is a conflation of jazz, R&B, gospel, don't forget gospel, um, pop music, and it's just a blend of of all of those things. And so that's the reason why I believe that it's so popular, because it has elements of other genres in it. Um, Being a genre itself, 
but it but it's a conflation it's a, a mixture it's a gumbo of all of those other elements and so what i really love about it um lot is it reminds me of how our ancestors used to communicate through drumming during mm -hmm. slavery and during their celebrations of just being and their culture, how they would use the drums and they would communicate messages about how to escape, about you know who to go see, you know what was a safe house. They would communicate messages through drumming. And so when we listen to the beats and the music, it takes us on a journey, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if we allow it to, it's a choice you know, if we allow the music to take us on that journey. And so it, it will live forever because the music tells a story. It, it connects us to our past. It connects us to each other. And then it, it gives us hope for the future. So it's just so much power in it. And you talked a little bit about the Don't Forget Gospel. Uh, yes. Talk a little bit about why that is so important to you, the, the gospel and the yes. spiritual side of house. Yeah, so um, the gospel part, I think about um, a couple of things when we, when we think about gospel. One, I think about the Black church experience. Um, and, well, that's it. I think about the Black church experience, and there are two pieces in that. One, if you've been in a Black church, you, you've experienced when the spirit gets high, and, and the, the choir just sang, and, and the organist is all sweat and, and hot, but the organist say he plays or she plays and then they, they play this chord. They go dun, dun, dun. And everybody stand up because you know what that means. And then it's dun, dun, dun. And you go like that. And then everybody start running around the church and we call it shouting. But really, it's footwork. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shouting right. is footwork. Mm -hmm. And so you see the ushers running around with the Martin Luther King fans with a little wooden stick on it, trying to fan people. The mother's board all excited. But that's where we get elements of the beats that we hear in house music is from that Black church experience. And then if you grew up in Mississippi, some of the churches, they may still do a lot of them, have gone to carpet. But when I was growing up, the, the churches had wood floors. And when the preacher would get up and start preaching, you could hear, you never knew when it started, but you could hear the drumming of the shoes on that wood floor. And it would be rhythmic, boom, 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 boom. And the preacher would start preaching in time with the beats of the foot, the feet stomping on the floor. And so it was this rhythm, this call and response, nonverbal mm -hmm. interaction. And so people are stomping their foot on the floor in time. The preacher is preaching in time. And it's a music that has no words, but it's people communicating with each other. You know, the, the congregation is letting the preacher know that they are with him and he's with them. And, and so it's, and so that's the same thing we experience on Twitch. We're not in the same room, but the beats and the music is what connects us and we ride it. And it's all spiritual because we are spirit beings encased in flesh. And, mm -hmm. and that's how we are connected or disconnected is because of our spiritual commonalities. And uh, that's what music gives us. Uh, 24 Lisa said, what's going on? Hi, Lisa. <laughs> we got the whole fam in the house. Hey, listen, you're listening to House Culture Conversations. Our guest, Dream Maker Diva, is dropping gems as always. She is uh, giving us a breakdown, and that's probably one of the most eloquent definitions I've heard or answers and responses to that question about why house is so spiritual and that connection to our upbringing in the church. And mm -hmm. though we may be expanded beyond that, it comes back to that uh, answer response. A lot of time the DJ plays the music, the music and the crowd responds and reacts yeah. to that vibe that he's, he's, he's uh, playing. I always say the DJ's job is to curate the groove and incite mm -hmm. the dance. So the okay. DJ's job is to get them dancing. Is yeah. To create that answer response. And now we have the creation of the role that you have 
really made, along with others, made so necessary in the experience, in the streaming experience, the moderator. Tell me a little bit about how you became a moderator and then break down a little bit of what the responsibilities of the moderator are. So um, moderating for me a lot was, um, was just because of being inspired. And, and I was inspired, and this is a story you don't know, so you're hearing it for the first time, obviously, um, is that I was actually inspired by you and DJ Dewey B. So um, when I was introduced to Twitch, I was introduced by uh, DBriz11, that's his Twitch handle. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to Dwayne Aiken's show, which is released Fridays. I, I met DJ Dewey B through Twitch, and then I started going to his show, his Saturday evening show, Evolutions. And one Saturday, um, you were guest DJing. Um, mm. He was there, but but you were you were DJing for his show. And I will never forget, Lot, the reverence that you showed for him as a friend, and the reverence that you showed for him as your mentor in music. And I was so inspired by that, the love, the loyalty, the respect, that I said to myself, this is the soil that I want to plant myself in. And, and so that's when I started um, going to, you know, participating in each of your shows and, you know, being active in the chat. And from there, um, we just developed a following and a relationship. And so I. Um, I, on different nights of the week, I, I have some, some Twitch channels that I listen to. And there was one um, that I didn't feel welcomed. I didn't feel mm. as welcomed. And so that lead me to, that led me, excuse me, to look for other shows on that particular night. And that's how I met Steve Madeira and his wife, Michelle, on Depths of the Underground. And the first time I went to their um, Twitch show, I felt so welcomed, so so loved, so appreciated for being there. And and they, Steve and Michelle, lead with humility. They are talented, but they also are very humble people. And that's how I learned that talent without humility is just arrogance. And so mm -hmm. they lead with humility, and I just loved it there. And so Michelle would Michelle is the main moderator. That's Steve's wife. Um, but she's also trying to do a lot of different things while he's DJing. And so when she needs to step away, I would pick up, you know, engaging with everybody and, and, and making sure everybody felt welcome to stuff. And so she asked me, you know, if I would be willing to serve as a moderator to help. And I was like, I don't even need the title. I get so much from you all that whatever I can give is, it is it's not comparable honestly and so i told her absolutely i would be a moderator and so that's that's actually how it happened it just came from feeling welcome and wanting to you know show that same warmth to other people i, I tell you I, I appreciate your words so much and it is true dj dewey b and i go way back and i respect yeah. him to the ends of the earth we are thick as thieves to the end uh, but yeah. what you said about, you know, being humble and bringing people in and you you just you took us to another level in all of that. When you joined our chat and you just came with that humble spirit and just want to hang out and have a good time. And you ushered in the conversation in our chat because you start saying, hey, everybody. And everybody's like, do we respond? Do we say something back? And you're like, come on, y'all, let's go. <laughs> and that yeah. is a large part of the the moderator right talk a little bit about the moderators yeah. specifically what they do in, during the stream absolutely so there are three things i believe that you know moderators do in their own way nobody's the same and nobody needs to be um but there there are three things that i believe we do um the first one is is serving as a hostess or a host um and affirming people when they come into the space. So affirming their presence, acknowledging their presence and embracing them. And so 
what that looks like is as soon as that name pops up, you know, we welcome them, whether it's with an emote, whether it's with words, we welcome them and we acknowledge their presence. We live in a culture where people's, um, where people's identity is attached to what they do or what they have. And in Twitch, in a virtual space, we don't know what people look like. We don't know what they do. We don't know what they have. And I believe that's a blessing because we are treating people as just beings. Like my favorite title of a song is free to be. And mm -hmm. we, you know, we just treat people as beings. And I, I love that. So the first thing we do is affirm people's presence. The second is that we foster that engagement and that fellowship. So making sure that people interact with each other, um, just making sure they have fun, they dance, they drop emotes, whatever. Um, and then the third thing I believe we do is we pour into the DJ. The DJ is actively pouring into us through their music, and we want to pour that energy, that that positive power. We want to pour that back into the DJ. So the moderators do and can affirm um, through acknowledge and presence. We in foster engagement and fellowship. And then we really hype up our DJ because sometimes we get more time out of them when we do that. You know, they play a little bit longer, <laughs> which we love. Truth. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? And I think it's it's really interesting how this role has emerged because you're absolutely right. All of those things are things the DJ never had to do. All the DJ had to do in a live event was play. Had right. to play and make sure he plays a nice set to really jack, get the crowd jacking and, and heat it up. And he knows because he can see it. He can feel the energy coming from the crowd. Well, you can't mm -hmm. feel, feel that streaming. And I know for me, I've watched the track chat sometimes and the song finish. I'm like, oops. <laughs> so you, you're trying to manage the chat. Oh, hey, what's right. going on? Or someone, what was the track ID? Oh, could you put the link yeah. in for this? Oh, you got some gear? Can you show us where to get the gear? And the next thing you know, right. song's up right. or you missed your mix or anything yeah. can happen. And sure. I think you're spot on. Hey, the candy lady's in the house. Candy lady said, hey, girl. Yes, yes. kiss the candy lady. I love it. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> It is good to see you, Candy Lady. Wait a minute, we got Glennon Hall said house music is a religion. Hey, you are spot on. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That is so much the truth. Now, let's get back to your history with house music. What are a couple of uh, your experiences back in the day, or even now that you've been a moderator? What have been some of the interesting stories you've come across? Um, uh, as a moderator, like something that's happened as a moderator. Moderator or an old story from back in the day, one of your fine memories. Oh, well, you know, I, well, I have two things I, I want to share. Um, one is a really a funny story, at least I think it's funny. Um, and then the other is what Twitch has given me, what what house music and this this virtual space has, has given is um, the opportunity to meet people across the world and I just am so very grateful for um, 24 Lisa, It's the Candy Lady, Fozzie Scott, DJ Dewey B, um, and House Life, and you and DJ Jerome O, and Carlos Forte, and um, D Briz, and I'm just an Arthur. I don't want to, and Judy, I don't want to miss anybody's name, but I'm so very grateful yeah, for you all. Um, and Miss Release Fridays, right? Yep. <laughs> yep, Dwayne Aiken. And um, so speaking of Dwayne Aiken, um, D Briz 11 is actually the, the main moderator for that particular show. But one day he had an event, one Friday evening, he had an event. And he asked me if I would uh, stand in for him. And I said, absolutely. D. Briz is, is he and I go, go back some years. And so, I, you know, he asked for something. And I'm like, absolutely. And so he, I was nervous, though. It's my first time ever, you know, being a moderator. I didn't know Dwayne that well. I, a lot of the people that um, participated in his show are alums from Whitney Young, where he and Dee Briz went. So I don't really know them that well, but we have been in the chat before. And so this was going to be my first time being in a 
like a direct role having to engage with these folks. And so I was a little nervous about that, a little intimidated. Um, and uh, the day of um, Friday, D Breeze 11 sent me a note and said, hey, watch out for those bots. And if they come in, you got to zap them. <laughs> and so in my mind, I'm very literal and, and visual. So in my mind, I'm like, what? You mean they're going to be robots and I have to zap them? What do I zap them with? How do I, what is happening? Oh, geez, what did I get myself into? And so I panicked, but I didn't tell him that because I didn't want to embarrass myself. I just said, Lord, whatever these robots are, just tell me what to do when I get there. And so when I got in the chat and, and things started going, that's when I saw the auto solicitation, you know, which is like an auto bot type thing. And then I saw how I could, you know, put them out or delete them or whatever we want to call it. And then same show, same night, you know how the chat is rolling. People are dropping emotes and they saying hi to each other. And I was trying to keep up with everybody and make sure I acknowledged everybody's presence. And, you know, I did something special for each person. And I chatted somebody and referenced the conversation that I was having with somebody else. And so the person said, um, what you talking about? And that's when I realized I had mixed the people up. And you know, the wonderful thing about chat is that everybody sees everything live. I was like, oh my God, I was so embarrassed. But thankfully, we all laughed it off. And that broke the ice. And we had a really great night the rest of the time. Because I'm just like, okay, well, that was a big goof. And everybody saw it and knows it. But but that's just fun. You know, we we don't have to be critical. We can be um, courageous. We can be creative. We can do all of that together. So um, so that that was that was the first time I moderated. And uh, it was I, I was uh, stressed, <laughs> but we got through it and everybody had an amazing time. And so I just know that, you know, whenever we try something new, this space being virtual is new for all of us. None of us went to school to learn how to do it. Um, and so it's just every day is an opportunity to give ourselves grace. We've never experienced that day before. We may walk into it with some experience, but everything we experience every single day is the opportunity to give ourselves some grace so that we can learn and then we can get to the next day. So um, so that's that experience. <laughs> I have beautifully said. Thanks again for listening to House Culture Conversations. We are chopping it up with Twitch Mod, Dream Maker Diva. And listen up, folks. If you have yet to hang out with Dream Maker Diva in the chat, you've got to check her out. Take a minute to talk about the streams that you, some of the streams you hang out on. Yeah. So I, um, to Monday night, if they're on, um, it's Dubs of the Underground. Um, that's 7 p.m. on Mondays. And then Tuesdays is my family. I mean, this is my mainstay. It's Tuesday evenings. Um, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time with um, Groove Sessions, DJ D. Lot. Then Thursday morning is phenomenal. Um, that's Thursday morning stretch at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then um, Friday evenings at 9 p.m. is Release Fridays. And so um, I think I don't, yeah, I, I just love them all. I mean, it's a different community, a different group of people but the same vibe, same love, same humility, same warmth. And um, I'm just so very grateful um, because I've met, you know, 24 Lisa and it's the candy lady in the chat and all of you all. And we wouldn't have met if it were not for this virtual space. So I'm, I'm just eternally grateful. And that's a, another point is since we've been kind of, in this pandemic, right, and, and shut in, we've met people all around the world. Yep. Made yep. friends that we would have never made. I met okay. people that lived across the street from me that I never knew. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, there was like, okay. oh, you grew up down the street from me. Uh, wow. Yeah. It, it's incredible. Yeah. And that's only yeah. happened because of this. So it always talks about 
uh, speaks to the fact that we got to look at the silver lining. There are, are oh, difficult yeah. times, but there is something that emerges out of that that can be very wonderful mm-hmm. and beautiful. And just so you know, this week we're going to have trouble. No groove sessions, no Thursday morning stretch. Just hopefully this week, it may be two weeks. So um, okay. sorry about that, y'all. But make sure you catch up with Dream Maker Diva on Depths of the Underground in the meantime and release Fridays because yeah. it is an experience when you hang out with this young lady. She has the ability to uh, raise all boats because her tide rides high and she is humble as they come, giving as they come. She's really beautiful people. Where do you see this house music thing going? We know it's going to keep going and it's going to permeate, but what's the next? We've got Twitch and Moderate. Do you think that'll go away or do you think streaming is around the state? Yeah, you know, I am very grateful um, that DeBriz11 introduced me to Twitch because um, it has expanded, like I said earlier, it's expanded my uh, awareness of house music and how expansive and diverse it is. And so for me, over um, since I've been involved over the last year and a half, a year or so, it's been therapeutic for me, to be quite honest. When I, I can get on and, and I don't have to be the work professional. I don't have to be the entrepreneur. I don't have to be the mentor. I can just be Jennifer. I don't owe anybody anything, but I can give what I have to give. That's what this space and, and house music has allowed us. And so because of that, um, and it's allowed us to bond with one another. So because of that, I just hope that it continues to expand um, domestically and globally that we can continue to build relationships regardless of geography, regardless of socioeconomic status, regardless of gender identification and ethnicity, that music does not discriminate. Music does not separate. You know, it, it brings us together. And that's what I see as the future. And, and I believe that we can, because of this streaming, we can make friends and, and we can fellowship with people across the world and we can do it without getting on a plane. And and I don't mm-hmm. believe that's going to go anywhere. I, I don't believe that's going to go anywhere because it's too valuable. Um, and um, it's a space, like I said earlier, where everybody can be aff- affirmed and everybody can be seen regardless to what they have or what they don't have. Um, and and I, I just think this it's just so much inclusion that we have and that we experience because of this space that I don't believe anybody is ready to give it up anytime soon. I know I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) I hear you. So well said. And our brother William Seth Shepard, fellow Mendo Monarch, Blue Smoke, he said amen to that. And I think that is fitting for that. You know, it was something that you were saying about this will never go away. And one thing I am seeing, I was on Twitch today at, at a live event. And I was yeah. like, wow, that's probably the next evolution. Now everybody's going to go live, but they're going to stream their live yeah. event to your point. So yeah. if DJ Dewey B is on the, in L.A. or, or right. Jerome O's in Italy or whatever, I can still participate yeah. if they are streaming on this platform, yeah. Twitch, and you can still mm-hmm. moderate. And yeah. It's an interesting thing that this has the ability to open things up. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, for my, for me, uh, you know, I don't, I don't get down on the dance floor like I used to. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of good that you can kind of in the privacy of your own home without embarrassing yourself, uh, cut a rug and get oh, your no. on. You can activate the knees. You can activate the knees. Like you are good. <laughs> uh, Alicia, ask you. Music doesn't discriminate. That's that's exactly right. Dream Maker Diva, it's obvious that you have people that already love you to pieces and just appreciate what you bring to this streaming universe that we have. And more people uh, that take on this role are going to learn a lot from your conversation with House Culture Conversations tonight. Any final thoughts for the crowd out there? I just um, say let's keep pouring um, into the cups that we drink from. So let's keep pouring into our DJs as they pour into us, because that's what community is. So God bless you all. 
Well, that's all that needs to be said. This is House Culture Conversations. And just like that, we got to call it, ladies and gentlemen. But enjoy your night. Enjoy your house music. And like Dream Man Kadiva said, be good to people. Peace.